me see if I can get this to where we need it to be. We talked a little bit about last week in the Daniel's vision of the statue. And we focused very much on the toes and the feet of that statue. Do you remember exactly what the toes stood for? What nation, in all indications, kingdom of a restored Rome? A restored Roman Empire, right? Now, where did we associate that with? Current day, the European Union. Union. That's exactly right. The European Union. Now, obviously, right now they're at 27 nations. And I'm not sure how that's going to end up as we go closer to the, we get closer to the end time. But this 10 nation confederacy that is going to be coming up will be a, a, a revived Roman Empire. This is as it is today with the 27, 28 nations that the European in, Empire mm -hmm. encompasses. Now, and I'll, as we get closer to getting to that end time and the rapture and things begin to happen, you're, you're going to find that the Antichrist or the beast is going to set up his spiritual kingdom in Rome. Now, last week, it was kind of interesting when Jared said what he said about the Antichrist being in his spiritual center being there at the Catholic Church. That is a very big conspiracy theory, and it, it may, very well may happen. I'm not sure how that's going to go in. I will give you part of that uh, next week or the next week, but... For the most part, we know that his spiritual kingdom will be set up there in Rome, but he's probably going to rule from Babylon, uh, which is there in, in, in Baghdad, current day Baghdad. Uh, and, and like I said, I'm going to get into that as we go a little bit farther. But the, the, this Ten Nation Confederacy is where the little horn will emerge, which will be the beast. And it says, if you'll remember from last week, anytime we give a directional, a cardinal direction out of the Bible, where, did, where does it start from? Jerusalem. It starts from Jerusalem. So anytime that happens, you look straight north, south, east, west, wherever that is, and that kind of gives you that indication. I also showed you a map of the current nation of Islam, or where Islam is predominant. We know that it is in the Middle East. What's interesting is we're going to find that Russia is going to team up with Islam to help try to go against the battle with the Antichrist, because Russia and some of those nations, as we saw from Ezekiel, will not team up with the rest of the European Union and that revived Roman Empire, per se. So we see that those nations we spoke about last week, which are here, Ezekiel spoke about them, Gog, Rosh, Magog, Meshach, Tubal. Uh, we also have, if you go over to France and Germany, which is Gomer, Libya, uh, we also have Ethiopia, Persia. Those nations there will team up in some effect or in some way, according to Ezekiel, and they will come down up on Israel. Now, it's, in, it's, it's very hard when I say this, but Israel is going to be at the very beginning on the side of the Antichrist because they think that their things are going to be... Uh, they're going to be a peace treaty. So as that gets closer... The little horn or the beast is going to come. They're going to make this peace treaty with Israel. So he's going to support Israel and allow the rebuilding of Jerusalem as we go forward, and even possibly the temple. And somewhere during that period of time, we're going to see these nations that you see here that are colored are going to come down upon and fight against the Antichrist. I'm going to talk a little bit about when maybe a time frame that's going to be. But as we talk about this a little bit, there were also some allies that are going to come up with Israel, some places that maybe we don't even think about. And then in Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 13, he says in his prophecy that Sheba, Dedan, and the merchant of Tarshish and all its leaders will say to you, have you come to seize spoil? I can't read because it's, it's got a glare. Um, ha have you assembled your host to carry off plunder? to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to seize great spoil. So we now have those who will not team up. That's my phone over Siri, I guess. Excuse me. Uh, it will not team up with Russia and her allies, which you see on this map. So then the question becomes, where do these nations, Sheba, Dedan, and Tarshish, where are they actually in <coughs> relation to Israel and the rest of the, the nations that you see? Now, I wrote them out here. 
Keep in mind that when you look at these nations, even the ones that are in color here that, that Ezekiel prophesied against, the only way that we can come up with where these are is based upon lineage. When Ezekiel saw this prophecy, he knew that the people of Gog and Magog, the people of Rosh and Meshach and Tubal, they all went up into the area of Russia. And when you do a lineage, you see that a lot of those people are there as well. So this is where the commentator that I'm using mostly, uh, John Phillips, where he gets his information, is, is in this area. And the same with all of these other countries and where they come up, and they will come up against Israel in here. So when we talk about, talk about Sheba, the nation that typically is referred to as that is Yemen. So you see it here down here on the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula. Dedan was a little more complicated when I began to look at it because you see that it is also somewhere here in this peninsula. I just put it here because I wasn't sure when I was doing some of my studies that exactly where it put, put it. But then we also have Tarshish, which is over here on the uh, eastern, or I'm sorry, the western shore of Spain, maybe Portugal down here with the Strait of Gibraltar, somewhere around in this particular area where the three allies that are going to come up and fight against these major forces. Okay, so that's Ezekiel's prophecy and how that kind of comes back. Any questions so far on any of that? Have you heard any other different theories? A lot of blank stares. <clears throat> so to sum this up, keep in mind that Russia and its allies will not join forces with the Antichrist. They are going to come down on Israel all at the same time. And it's going to be, because, well, I'm not kidding. Russia will again emerge as a world power. It's going to happen, and it's going to challenge everyone in the West, all of those European unions. It's going to pursue its age-long goal in the Middle East to be a superpower. So the question then becomes is when actually does Russia defeat the anti or try to defeat the Antichrist? When does this all take place? If you're going to put it in a timeline here in the tribulation, or before or after, where would you think that this happens based upon what you know prior to us starting this class? Is this going to happen in before the beginning of the last seven week period? Does it happen during or does it happen afterwards? All of these nations come down upon Israel. I think it'd be after the peace treaty because Israel wouldn't expect it to. I think so as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other ideas on that? How much of this is brand new information you have never in your entire life heard before? All of it? Someone? A little bit. A little bit? Okay. <clears throat> so, I think it's just crazy how Israel is the state of the state. The shape of a star. It's really cool. Isn't it though? It's huge too. <laughs> when the beast first comes to power in Europe, he's going to quickly, and I mean quickly, unify the West. He's going to impose this whole totalitarian will on all the nations under his control. And uh, he's going to begin to prepare for a world conquest. And this is going to happen because Russia's fall. We're going to see that happen as it goes forward. So the major obstacle to his future plans, as far as the beast, is going to be this revitalized Russia. Uh, we're going to see Russia when it take, talks about Iran and Syria. You do see those now being very much strategic par partners with Russia. There's no doubt whatsoever. So when we look back and if you read through Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39, God has already promised that he himself will wipe Russia off the map and the mount that she sends and the moment that she sends her forces into the land of Israel, this will be the beast cue to begin, and he will sign at that point a seven-year pact with the nation of Israel. Now, so the, the commentator here almost places it somewhere, like Chad said, within that first three and a half years, probably at the beginning of such, because when you see the collapse of Russia and you can see the collapse of that great economy going down, the, the next thing is that the beast will be able to come in with a world economy, a world mon monetary system, that's going to take the place of that because Russia will have fallen. Now, it's interesting when we get to Isaiah, what actually happens to Russia, and just listen here for just a moment. Um, when, when, when the beast signs a seven-year pact with the nation of Israel, which he will unconditionally guarantee Israel's security, you can see that in Isaiah 28, 18, 
This is bringing about the peaceful and safe conditions envisioned by Ezekiel for the people of Israel or for the nation of Israel. The Jewish people will be protected by the Western world, which, of course, uh, has and, ha and will be, which will be headed by the iron Will beast at that particular time. Now, under the umbrella of this pact, the Jews will begin to rebuild their temple. Thus, it's going to infuriate the entire Muslim world. I showed you that picture earlier. The entire Muslim world is going to be completely infuriated that the beast that comes out of the European Union, that comes out of this seven, let's see if I have the picture here, uh, that comes out of here is going to infuriate every other Muslim nation around it. Where do you think is Russia is going to get its uh, support from? All of those nations out there. All of those nations. Because when we see at the very end of Ezekiel, it says, and her host. So that means other nations than the ones we see colored here on this map. Other nations will rise up with them because of Islam, uh, uh, hatred towards Israel. And when the beast allows the temple to be rebuilt in Jerusalem, all of that hatred is going to surface and it's going to push all these Islamic nations up to Russia to help her try to defeat Israel. Do you think Israel will be defeated? No. Absolutely not. Why? <laughs> Who? Where? Tell me where. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like, where is it? What is it? I said Ezekiel 38. That's what you're talking about. Ezekiel 38, but there was a promise before that with Abraham. The well, Abraham covenant. He promised him. God doesn't go back on his promises. So when we see this and we talk about the nation of Israel, I can promise you that the, there is nothing going to happen to the nation of Israel. They have been dispersed. They will come back together as a nation as prophesied by Daniel and by, uh, by the promise that, he was, that God had given Abraham. You see that happening here. And then again, like I said, uh, as we look, let me get back down here to my notes. <clears throat> um, so the, the, the Jewish people are going to be protected. The whole Muslim world is going to come up and completely be infuriated with what is happening there in Jerusalem. So Russia is going to seize that that opportunity to gain this influence over the Middle East and of the Muslim world. Russia is inherently and has been a atheist country. They have never been one to proclaim a religion. Communism is a religion in itself which does not proclaim any kind of God. Um, I was going to bring up some quotes on that, but I felt like it kind of went off on a, a rabbit trail. But just know that Russia does not proclaim to be any kind of one particular re religion, and, uh, and, and they do not support that at all. And it's almost a little infuriating that Islam has come up into Russia because that spread has begun to happen, and Russia is not quite sure what to do. But it shows, and, and it's what we're seeing, that they're going to use that to their advantage for their hatred towards Israel to gain this world superpower. So she will commit all of her forces to the invasion of Israel, and it will be met, met by doom described in Ezekiel. This, this invasion takes place after the rapture of the church, after the rise of the beast in the west, and after the signing of the pact with Israel, and just before the beast takes over the world. It will be the collapse of Russia that makes the global empire and the global monetary system that comes to be. So when we see that, we're going to know. Now, I don't think, and I, I do believe this with all of my heart, that the rapture happens at the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period. I truly believe this, that we will be raptured out prior to any of this happening. My opinion, okay? There are three different opinions on the rapture. We're going to get into that next week. Actually, not next week, but the next week we're going to get into the three ideas. Some people say that the church is raptured prior to the seven year, last seven-year period of Daniel. Some say it happens midweek. Some say it happens at the Battle of Armageddon. I don't know what you've been taught in the past. I have always been taught that it happened mid, midpoint until later on in life in my studying. So there is definitely support for all three arguments. But I'm going to tell you why I believe what I believe in two weeks. Why the rapture, I feel like, happens prior to some of this. Um... <clears throat> Let me see here. Let's talk about what happens here in Russia. Russia is going to launch this attack on Israel, and it will be aided by all of the Muslim world and the nations that unite in a common determination to put an end to the nation of Israel once and for all. However, Russia will fail. If we see Ezekiel 39, verse 12 through 15, it says that it will take the Jews seven months, seven months to bury 
all the dead invaders from those other countries that we just talked about. Seven months. Pretty incredible, isn't it? It also says that the Jewish people will be able to use the abandoned fuel supplies from this invasion force for seven years. Now, when you think about that, and you think about the invasion coming down upon Israel, then that is a tremendous amount of firepower that comes upon Israel. The Iron Dome that they have up there is maybe one of the most impressive things I've ever seen, militarily speaking, that I've, it, 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 ever. It is impressive. I'm, let's see, I'm going to read Ezekiel 38, or 39 to you just a second. Um, I may. Anytime you try to do something under pressure, it just doesn't. If you get it pulled up before I do, please let me know. I'll let you speak. I'll let you read it. I have to say it in my head. I got 39. You got it? Okay. Read 39 and verse 12 through 15, Chad, if you don't mind. For seven months, the house of Israel will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. Even all the people of the land will bury them, and it will be to their renown on the day that I glorify myself, declares the Lord God. They will set apart men who will constantly pass through the land, burying those who are passing through, <coughs> even those left on the surface of the ground, in order to cleanse it. At the end of seven months, they will make make a search. As those who pass through the land pass through and anyone sees a man's bones, then he will set up a marker by it until the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamangog. Seven months there. And then, uh, let's see, I had you read 12 and 15. And in, in 9, 9 through 12, it says that all the abandoned equipment and supplies that they're going to have uh will supply their natural resources for a similar period of around seven years. So all of that equipment, all the steel that's going to emerge upon Israel will be completely decimated, and all of that's going to supply Israel with a, with a whole bunch of armament for quite some time after that happens. So as a matter of fact, so complete will be the, the collapse of Russia and its allies, including countless Muslim hordes, that the people will be forced to acknowledge God's hand in the whole affair. And if you read Ezekiel 38... Uh, verse 23 and 39, or chapter 39, verse 21 through 23, we also see that it will be where they finally acknowledge that God, not not their Allah that they believe, but the God of, 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 of Jehovah, that we, that, that they will acknowledge who he is. Now, that being said, <clears throat> we have the beginning of or where we're coming to on the tribulation period. I want to go through, our, and I, but I don't know that this is now the quite the time, and since we only have 10 more minutes left in class here, Ishmael and his sons, how Islam, the religion began, how it kind of is going to transpire. I think you have a good understanding of why Islam is going to come about and how it's going to be used in God's total destruction of and coming of the completion of the seven-week period. Keep in mind that next week, when, or the two weeks, I do apologize, that, um, that, that, that we'll be talking about the rapture. If you have any questions or anything that come up that you have thought about in the past or have been taught in the past, I'd love for you to be able to bring it up in class because we're going to go over all three of those and, and those three <coughs> three things. The final thing is the royal grant. I want you to make sure that this is impression, that, that this is put as an impression upon your mind when we see this. This is a map by Clarence Larkin. Does anybody have any of Clarence Larkin's books? If you don't, it's a very, very good series. He, he, he was, uh, back at the turn of the century, uh, was one of those, it, it, just a phenomenal writer uh, on the end time events. But the royal grant here in his perception comes up, obviously it ends here over in Babylon. So when the, the, the beast sets up his ruling power here in Babylon, it's going to be a part of the royal grant that God gave Abraham. There are some who think that this actually goes a little farther south and comes up over around Egypt. Either way, we know that the little sliver of land that they have now is not what God had promised Abraham. We know that it was a much larger area, and that will come to fruition because God does not go back on his promises. 
Okay, that's all I have for today. I want to answer some questions that maybe have come up in the last three or four weeks since we began this series. Or something that you want to talk about that's not making sense. Anything? You can go back to your Islamic map. Islamic map. There. Okay. If those countries grow up growing Islam or the belief in Islam, they're going to push the Jews out. I mean, they should retreat back to Israel. That's correct. So Israel is going to gain in leaps and bounds in numbers. So that's, that's something else that we need to think about as a, as a we go forward in this. That's right. They're pushing other religions out of these countries as they move in. Uh, I did see an, a, 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 where they had divided it by 100 years, where Islam has increased by 100 years every time. It was phenomenal at how fast Islam has grown. Uh, maybe the largest growing religion in the world at this point. I, I'm almost certain that that is the, the statistic, statistic that I read. Uh, and you're absolutely right. I also read about the Jewish people. They are the most pure bled, bred or pure blooded um, a group of people in the entire world. Like if, if, if you're born Jewish, typically you marry a Jewish person and then you have Jewish children. They still to this day are the most pure uh, blooded individual group of people anywhere in the world. What's it kind of just treat? I think it's treason. That's what they say. That's yeah. When they go on the ride of someone else. So God's trying to get them as a nation because He promised them, trying to get them as a nation to recognize Him as God, to recognize Jesus Christ, not Him as God, but to recognize Jesus Christ as who He was. And they will, halfway at the tribulation period, they will begin to see. Now, God has allowed things to happen to them. And he said they would be dispersed for a, a period of time, but they would be coming back in, and they would come back in in just huge hordes to the nation of Israel, which there is now. And 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 we're we're seeing that happen today, which is kind of an eye-opening event. You see more pe more Jews moving back to the nation of Israel than you ever have in its entire history. Right. So, I have a question. Yeah. So on the timeline stage, you know, just to simplify, it, rapture happens. We got three years. Sometimes in that three years, this whole thing happens. And from that's when the treaty and all that stuff sets itself up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we think the first three years is generally being pretty quiet. It's pretty quiet. It's really not. There are things happening outside of it that are going to start building up. There's going to be much. tension, especially with Russia. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that it's... When we talk about a lot of this, sometimes we have to classify in times of just with Israel, when you're talking about that piece, or we have to classify it as a war. Because... The United States fits in here somewhere, right? And how are we going to be affected with that? Well, we're going to be affected probably monetarily more so than anything. But we will see and feel the effects of that. And as a world system, whenever you have someone who is controlling most of the world's population, 550 million, which is going to be somewhere around 36, 37% more than the United States population, when you have that here in the European Union, you have a very strong force that's going to dictate what happens with the currency in the world. Especially after the fall of Russia and all of those allies around there. When you take this entire area and now you say, oh, everything else has collapsed, we're gonna use one monetary system. Whether it be the Euro, whether it be whatever, I don't know. But there is going to be a strong indicator that the Antichrist will have the monetary power to dictate what happens. So what I thought was interesting is if the rapture happens, how many people are being taken off this earth? You know, And if you look at the United States being as the West is helping, we have trouble supporting Israel now, so they have to pluck all the Christians out. It's kind of interesting that I think it just proves that God's actually going to be coming and doing the majority of what He wants to do. Really. Well, sure, because the world's going to be pretty chaotic anyway when it loses, you know, third population, whatever it is. Right, right. All of a sudden, I think it's going to be eye-opening. How many people will, after the rapture, be left behind, feeling that they thought that they had a salvation, a true salvation? I think you're going to have church fulls of people sometimes that are looking around and being like, I can't believe I missed it. I can't believe I missed it. And that's what's scary when you think about that. Jeremy, I've been out for two of the weeks that we've all been doing this, so uh, forgive me if you've already went over this, but where is America at in this? Where? That's a good question. America, we don't necessarily deal with it because it wasn't dealt with in the Bible, yeah, per se, right? But it will feel the effects of everything. There's going to be things, disastrous things that are going to be happening as the buildup and as the climax happens, which is why when the Antichrist comes onto the scene, 
things kind of begin to stabilize and people begin to see him as the savior. And then especially at the three and a half year part when he is killed and then he is raised from the dead, the whole world will fall in line with that as he is the true Messiah. And that's how he gets his support. That's how he gets what he's going to, to create as this world superpower that he's going to establish. And, and, and he will do it because we have television, we have those things that everybody is going to see his rise from the dead. And so it's going to appear as just another Christ, another resurrection. Okay. Anything else? I am not going to be here next week. Me and Tracy and the kids are going to take a little weekend jaunt away. Uh, any of you interested in teaching?